Hello, my name is Katherine Hales, and I'll be discussing my book, Postprint, Books and Becoming Computational, which is a finalist for the Big Other 2021 Book Award for Nonfiction. So let me begin by holding up some objects for you to look at. First is a book by Robert Thompson about the spread of telegraph technology. Second, a book about insects by Albert Gall. And then third, my own book, Postprint. So if I was to ask you, what did you just see? You would probably say books. Or if you're a little more attuned to media theory, you might say print books. But actually, these three books were produced by very different technologies. The first one, Thompson Books, printed in 1947, was produced by Metal Type. The Insect Book, published in 1951, used no Metal Type at all. Rather, it used an optical typesetter called Lumatype that worked by flashing a xenon strobe through a disc onto photographic paper. And my book, Postprint, published in 2021, was produced entirely through computer codes, which uh, were then output in different formats, print book, ebook, and so forth. So what does it matter that the technologies were very different? Well, as any archeologist could tell you, an artifact ripped out of its context does not have very much significance. To understand its full meaning, it's necessary to look at the artifact in its technological and its cultural context. And that's what I do in postprint, as print makes the transition from metal type in 1950 through to 2000 and beyond, where now computer code has completely interpenetrated all aspects of print production and consumption. Well, I'm interested not only in the technological uh, implications of print books, but also their cultural implications. And for that, I went to where the sausage gets made, where if you're a scholar, means university presses, and interviewed personnel at five university presses to try to determine how they thought about the books that they produce. Uh, if you will, what is the imaginary of the university press. And uh, I also included information about innovative projects such as that at the University of Minnesota Press, where they're combining traditional print book production with an electronic format called Manifold that associates the print book with a website that um, allows additional commentary and archival material to be added to the print book. So uh, if we go into the computational era, not only do the technologies change, but the very nature of the sign changes. So as Dennis Tennant has pointed out, in the contemporary era, signs printed on paper or perhaps appearing on computer screens are underlain by many layers of computer code. And in fact, in post print, I include 10 what I call x-ray pages, pages where the print surface is displayed alongside the relevant computer codes to remind readers that the book itself is uh, only partially there in its print form, that the computer codes that help produce it are uh, also at work. So if uh, scholars or anyone else do not have full access to the computer codes used to produce electronic documents, then we are put in a position of partial illiteracy, and I mean that in a literal sense, an inability to read the sign in all of its full complexities, or as I put it, partial asemiosis. So semiosis means the ability to read signs. Asemiosis, conversely, means an inability to read signs. 
And increasingly, Tennant argues, and I agree, this is becoming a pervasive cultural concern. Also, the idea that digital technologies are eroding our ability to pay attention and to read deeply and uh, at length. So I talk about two contemporary novels that explore this anxiety. The first is a collaborative project, The Silent History, which interestingly enough was published first as an app for iPhones, and then a book by Elena Graydon called The Word Exchange. In The Silent History, a generation of children is born that are unable to understand verbal language at all, either in spoken or in written form. And it's eventually discovered this condition is caused by a virus, which then begins to spread throughout the population. So partial asemiosis and in, followed by total asemiosis is becoming a pervasive cultural concern. The word exchange has a similar plot, a conspiracy is afoot to introduce a virus through the extensive use of digital technologies, specifically digital devices inserted into one's ear that interact directly with the brain's neurological structures, making it difficult for people to use language correctly and finally to understand language at all. And this is done, of course, for uh, the purpose of making money. So two, two books that are exploring this anxiety about our ability to continue to read and understand computational uh, and digital signs. So uh, where, where do I think books are going? I explore this through uh, two diametrically uh, opposed directions. One is exemplified by a book by Amaranth Borsek and Brad Boos called Between Page, Page and Screen. This book has no words at all, only icons. To read it, you have to hold it up to your webcam after it's been suitably initial, initialized by a visit to their website. And then words are projected virtually, as it were, between you and the space of the screen so that you are able to read the words. So you can read only through the computer uh, mediation. The second example is by an Argentine artist, Mirtha Dermasash, and uh, she specializes in asemic writing. That is writing which is gestural, looks like uh, handwriting, but it never resolves into alphabetic symbols. So it's a form of writing which is parasitic on writing, but can't be read in the conventional sense. And her books can only be interpreted by humans. They cannot be read by a computer at all. So two opposite examples, one book only read by humans, the other only read by computers. In conclusion, where do I think that books are going? Well, books have been with us now for hundreds of years, or if we go back to the Chinese tradition, even thousands of years, they've gone through enormous transitions from the parchment sheepskin of the Middle Ages, through metal type, through computational codes, and through all of these changes, they've managed to uh, maintain their cultural significance and their importance to human understanding. Far from books being threatened by the advent of digital technologies, on the contrary, they experience a kind of renaissance and exuberance in exploration of the possibilities of the codex in artist books, for example. So I think books will continue to be a vital source of inspiration, knowledge, and pleasure into the foreseeable future. Thank you for your attention, and I invite you to go along with me on my adventures in postprint and experience these transitions for yourself. Thank you for your attention.